Hello everyone. Welcome to module 3 of the open course where on water accounting and water productivity using VAPO. My name is Solomon Siyu. I am a lecturer in water accounting in the Department of Land and Water Management of IHG Delft Institute for Water Education in the Netherlands. This module is the third module of the course on water accounting and water productivity using VAPO. I hope you have followed the previous two modules. Module 1 covers introduction and usage of vapor data and module 2 introduces water productivity using vapor. The third module is about water accounting using vapor. A brief introduction of this module. This module consists of five units. The first unit is introduction to water accounting which describes the purpose the need and importance of water accounting and its relevance for integrated water resources management you need to is devoted to describing remote sensing products used for computing water balance of a river base and other data sets used in water accounting unisri discusses how we can compare remote sensing data with in situ observations and infer reliability of remote sensing data used for water accounting. It also shows how to perform precipitation and evapotranspiration computation per land use or land cover classification. Unit 4 is about rainfall and incremental evapotranspiration. It describes rainfall incremental evapotranspiration. It describes the need to split evapotranspiration to its rainfall and incremental components. It also discusses the various methods used to split evapotranspiration and provides an exercise where we use a soil moisture water balance model to split evapotranspiration. The last unit, Unit 5, describes water accounting report. It mainly discusses the resource based sheet and accompanying tables and the maps of a water accounting report. It also discusses key indicators of the state of water resources in a river basin. This educational material has been prepared by IG Delft Institute for Water Education in the framework of Vapor Remote Sensing for Water Productivity Project implemented by the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations and funded by the government of the Netherlands. In this video, we will start the first unit of module 3. After completing the first unit of this module, you will be able to describe what we mean by water accounting. Describe some of the methodologies used to perform water accounting of a river basin and also you will be able to describe the relevance of water accounting to integrated water resources management. Water is a unique resource. Everything in the planet depends on water for survival. Every organism, every individual and ecosystem on the planet depends on it. Water impacts all aspects of life on this planet. Because water impacts everything, if water is managed poorly and its shortage can lead to serious consequences, it can lead to disease and malnutrition, economic growth can be affected. It can lead to social instability and conflicts. The environment will be negatively affected because of poor water management and water shortage. When we look at the global water consumption, it's doubling roughly every 20 years, more than twice the rate of population growth. The forecast is already in 2030, more than half of the world population is going to face water shortage. Availability of renewable 
freshwater resources per capita is decreasing very rapidly. These limited freshwater resources are becoming more and more polluted. Therefore, achieving water security and increased resilience to hydrological extremes requires a good understanding of water resource dynamics at the basin scale. Integrated water resource management calls for a sustainable management of water resources to ensure that there is enough water for future generations and that the water meets high quality standards. An integrated water resource management approach promotes the coordinated development and management of water, land and related resources in order to maximize the resultant economic and social welfare in an equitable manner without compromising the sustainability of vital ecosystems. Water resources management of a river basin requires monitoring water availability and water demand. Water availability and water demand depend on hydrology and ecology and are influenced significantly by weather and climate. Integrated water resource management requires accurate identification and delineation of catchment and river channels within a basin based on terrain and slope. It requires characteristics of the basin such as soil, vegetation, lakes and reservoirs, and groundwater storage. It also requires information about water demand, domestic demand, agricultural demand, and industrial demand within the basin. Therefore, organized data and information at river basin level are key factors in order to implement integrated water resources management. Increased stakeholders involvement in water management is vital for implementation of integrated water resources management. This need has been translated into legal requirements for public participation and transparency in water governance. The implementation of those legal requirements calls for making information about water publicly available in a clear and accessible way. Water accounting emerges as a useful tool to promote efficiency and transparency. Water accounting represents a way of compiling water balances in a defined domain including different water use components with a standard presentation format in the form of standardized sheets, maps, figures and tables in a defined time step. The domain can be an irrigation scheme, a river basin, an administrative region or a country and the time step can be monthly, seasonal or yearly. A more formal definition of water accounting is adopted from literature as the systemic acquisition, analysis, and communication of data and information related to stocks and fluxes of water in natural, disturbed, or heavily engineered environments within a geographic domain. Geographic domain can be as small as an irrigation scheme or a river basin and any administrative region including countries. Fluxes and stocks include precipitation, evapotranspiration, and flows and storage. The data can be collected from different governmental organizations, ground observations, remote sensing and modeling results and the results are presented in different formats including databases, standardized sheets, maps, figures, and tables. There are various water accounting methodologies in use. However, we are going to discuss here only two of the methodologies, which are the system of environmental economic accounting for water or SIA water and water accounting 
plus. The first example of standardized water accounting was developed in France in the early 80s. Its purpose was understanding the impact of water use and management on economic sector. This concept was a foundation for the development of system of economic environmental accounting for water, SEA water. The SEA water framework considers the flows between the environment and the economy. The inland water resources system is comprised of surface water, groundwater, and soil water. In relation to the economy, it's represented by abstractions, imports, exports, and returns of the most relevant economic agents, such as households, the industry involved in the collection, treatment, and the discharge of sewage, the industry involved in the collection, treatment, and supply of water to households, other industries which use water in the production process and to the rest of the world. The SEWA has been designed to link the economic information with hydrologic information in order to provide the users with a tool for integrated analysis. And as such, it involves collection of very detailed data from various sources. To know more about the framework, you are referred to read the SEWA water documentation. Solving water problems requires information from many disciplines and the physical accounts which describe sources and use of water are the most important foundation. The information has to be coherent and harmonized in order to provide an integrated picture useful for the assessment of the problems. Water Accounting Plus is a water accounting methodology developed by IG Delft in partnership with IMI and FAO. The geographic domain for Water Accounting Plus is a river basin, and it uses mainly data from remote sensing products and other open access spatial databases and information. When data is available, the remote sensing data are validated using ground-based observations and literature values. The data collected is then analyzed through standardized analysis method using open access programming tools and scripts. And the results are reported using standardized overview sheets, maps, tables, and graphs. The outputs of Water Accounting Plus provide general overview at river basin scale of Overexploitation, manageable versus unmanageable flows, exploitable flows, reserved flows, utilized and utilizable flows. Water accounting plus descend between landscape evapotranspiration from rainfall and incremental evapotranspiration from natural and man-made withdrawals. It also distinguishes evapotranspiration for different land use classes with different management strategies. It tracks surface and groundwater flows as well as water supply and return flows. Some water accounting plus output examples from the FAO water accounting report on Nile River Basin. The map shows the precipitation minus evapotranspiration for the year 2018, revealing where water is generated and where it is consumed. The bar chart shows precipitation and evapotranspiration per land cover classes, indicating which land covers generate runoff or consume more water than available through precipitation. The table shows key indicators for the basin water resources status. We will discuss these indicators in the last unit of this course. Lastly, some of the reference materials used to prepare 
this presentation are listed here. This is the end of this short video. Thank you for your attention and I hope you gained some insight about the role of water accounting in integrated water resources management. In the following unit, we will discuss about one of the main subjects of hydrology, water balance of a river basin. And I hope to see you in the following unit.